hopefully you can hear me okay uh, if someone could just put yes in the chat box that would be much appreciated good okay fine okay we're on the ym um let me just start with the daily because this is where really where all the actions come from and actually let's just pop that down out of the way uh keep it at the small size you can probably see the uh, the wick here to the lower body this is basically what's going on i haven't got the volume let me just switch the volume on here and we will see how much volume we've got coming in today uh volume up down there we go let's click that on just put that on to tick there we go there we are right now we can see how much volume we've got coming in basically we've had a a reversal a pretty sharp reversal on the day on an intraday basis now whether you're an intraday trader or uh, a longer term trader if the candle stays the way it is at the moment then this is basically setting up for a for some further buying for a reversal back to the upside probably back up to the volume point of control the markets have been hammered with bad news um, everybody knows the 26 different reasons why um, it's no great surprise but the the markets over time will become inured to this news they will become uh, very aware of what is coming up and despite the fact that the news is pretty grim at the moment in terms of employment and everything else it's not having the major impact that you would expect it to um, you might expect the markets to collapse under the weight of this news they are not and it's pretty clear certainly from today's price action the general momentum the you get a sense when you're trading all day long that um, you it's a gut instinct it can't it's not something that we can teach but it's something you develop over time where you get an instinct for where reversals are like to happen of course it's delivered in terms of volume in terms of the anomalies you see you can see one here for example you know this was at the 15 minute this was uh, just after the open big rally big wick to the upper body ton of volume coming in this is the open of the market you know and down we go now we're starting to see the reversal come up back up to the uh, up to the volume point of control beyond what's interesting about the 15 minute time frame is that what we're seeing now is a key level of resistance coming into play i'll just move the chat box out of the way and it's another reason for it's one of the many reasons for having multiple charts uh, multiple time frames open whatever it is you're trading because a slower time frame will always trump what is going on in a faster time frame so if you have a level such as this as we have just at the 23,200 and above this red dash line which is on the accumulation distribution indicator i've not drawn this line on manually this is delivered automatically by the indicator what it does you may not be able to see it but this has got a little seven alongside it and what that's telling me is that this level has been tested and held seven times and every time a level is tested and holds then the line thickens accordingly so this level up here is less strong this one is much stronger and therefore in the context of where the price action is likely to go it is going to be significant certainly if you're on a slow on a faster time frame this is going to carry great weight you can see here the market's literally testing and retesting this level as i'm talking it's come up to it it's tried to get through it it hasn't got through it if it's going to get through that level then clearly what you want to see down here is a lot of volume pushing through that and obviously um, associated with that you want to see this candle close relatively wide with very minor wicks to the upper body if it closes in its current condition where are we 17 we've got another couple of minutes to run before this candle closes off if it closes in its current condition with decent volume underneath then we're looking at a potential reversal because this is looking a little bit weak again you can see it over here we had the rally hit it reversed off it trying to get through it didn't get it on that occasion we came up to it again tried to get through weakness big wick to the upper body down we go now we're coming up again this candle looks a bit weak it's got a big wick to the upper body good volume below it you know the market's struggling at this level it's really trying to get through that level but it's not succeeding now, if you step down onto the 10 minute it's a similar sort of picture it's tried to pierce this level here which again is pretty strong you can see the thickness of it uh, but the market keeps testing it the good news is that if it does manage to break this region of price-based uh, resistance and that's what the accumulation distribution indicator is looking at it's looking at 
support and resistance in the traditional technical way from price-based uh, regions. But the good news is, from a if you're trading this to the to the long term uh, to the upside, and you're looking for a break to the uh, to the bullish side of the market, perhaps through 23,200 and on, as you move through that level, the volume on the volume point of control. This is the volume point of control here. This is the fulcrum of the market, or was the fulcrum of the market. As the market moves away from that, the volume falls away also. And what that means is for a move beyond this region, if it breaks through this price area of resistance, the journey higher should be a lot more straightforward because the volume here is falling away. In other words, the volume is not acting as resistance in the same way. Here we go back to this chart. If we break through to 23,200, yes, we've got some volume over. If I, if I just squeeze this over, you can see how far this volume extends. It's huge absolute wedge of volume there but as we get through that level again the volume is falling away so if the market can break through then we're likely to see a relatively straightforward journey higher if it can get through this level here and on up to this region here and that's the power of of really both indicators you're looking at support and resistance from two perspectives you're looking at it from the perspective of price with the accumulation distribution indicator and you're looking at it from the perspective of volume because the density of the volume here tells you how many orders how many traders are trapped in this region it's massive so it makes sense therefore that when the market approaches such regions the market is going to struggle because there are so many orders in there being executed all the time traders traders getting out of weak positions traders jumping in and there's a whole load of limit orders sitting here as well. But as you get into these thinner volumes, it's going to take less effort for the market to drive through. And that's really the premise of support and resistance from volume and support and resistance from a price based perspective. You can see here the weakness developed here on this candle. So we've now got, first of all, the sign of weakness on the first candle. Now that's being reinforced with another candle. So we're expecting the market probably to drop down to the volume point of control here. So if we were trading this as a, as a scalping trader, we shoot over to the, I've got the 30 second here. I generally have this on 15 second, but we'll leave it on 30 second. That's pretty quick as well. So if you're looking at that from a scalp, you know, I'd be jumping in there, getting in short. You can see the trend monitor. It's transitioned. We've had the rally and we've rolled. We've got the reversal. We're now in the downside. So this is a reversal from primary to primary. In other words, from uh, a, a bullish sentiment move and we've now gone into a bearish sentiment. And it also uh, explains that whatever time frame you're in, the principles of volume price analysis apply universally. So it doesn't matter. We're on a 30 second chart here. This could be an hourly chart. It could be a 15 minute chart, could be a daily chart. Makes no difference. The principles are identical. The indicators work in exactly the same way. You can see here the surge of volume coming in. We got to these levels. We had an old string of doges. Didn't look very strong. No nice widespread candles, lots of wicks. Bang. In we get a ton of volume. Down we go. Our first expectation would be to go back to the volume point of control because we expect congestion at that point. We've now broken away from the volume point of control. We're moving down into a higher region of volume here. So we expect the market to, to have a little bit of a struggle here. There's very little in the way of price-based uh, support coming into play here. You can see this has only been tested once. That was a region that was once. So all these little ones here, very thin lines, not very strong regions sometimes you get them clustering together in which case they can act in concert but generally speaking when the market gets to these very minor levels you know it's going to break through there relatively easily but when you start to get down to these thicker ones this one's three this one's five those are going to be stronger potential regions of either support or resistance depending on which way the market's going so that's what we're seeing at the moment we've had this nice move down and really that's triggered off and giving you confirmation and confidence by going down to these slower time frames where you're seeing these these much deeper levels of resistance coming into play and as i said at the start you have to understand that the slower time frames whatever is going on in a slower time frame will trump a faster time frame always because it has the time element it has the weight of time embodied in whatever it is you're looking at in terms of the change of the trend monitor, you're not seeing anything at the moment because this run down here is very quick. It's a it's a minor reversal, but it's perfectly tradable. This is a nice this is a nice points grab. There's 30, 40 points in there for takes. 
you know, that's nice on the YM, that's a couple of hundred dollars, uh, pretty easy money, to be honest. Uh, when you move over to the two minute, what we're starting to see now is if this trend is going to develop into something more, more significant, in other words, it's not simply a minor pullback. In other words, it's a true reversal from a primary bearish trend to a primary bearish trend, then this sentiment that's being reflected here on the trend monitor will ultimately ripple through to the two minute. It will then appear on the five minute and down onto the 10 minute, over onto 15 and so on and so forth. It will ripple through the market. And the analogy that I always use, I've used so many times, is a, is a pebble in a pond. Imagine a pebble in a pond, you've thrown the pebble in and the ripples from where that, pot, that stone lands in the pond move away from it and it's exactly the same principle as applies here. It starts to ripple through. You can start to see it transitioning here now. It's gone into a darker red as this market moves down. Let's just pop this one open. Let's go down to the 15 second because that will be interesting as well. Uh, there we are. Let's change that over. There we go. 15 second gives you a nice perspective. A little bit of a transition here. Now we're starting to probably come out the other side if we're going to move deeper. We've got a very strong level in here at uh, 23,170, which maybe will come up and retest. We'll see. That will certainly hold as a ceiling of resistance. We've got a level here that's coming into play. We've got a level here now that's coming into play. And all these levels are just giving you all the information of, you know, am I going to play this long? Am I going to play it short? Where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get out? And also, how much travel have I got in this trade? In other words, if I'm going to jump into this trade now, let's say I'm going to go long now uh, because I feel this is a reversal from, uh, from, the, from the trend lower here. We're now going to reverse into a bullish trend. Where is this going to hit some resistance? The first point I'm looking at is here. So in terms of taking a scalping trade, am I comfortable taking 10 points? I might be, I might not be, but I'm expecting congestion to build here. Why? Because we're moving back to the heaviest point of uh, volume on the chart here at the volume point of control. So don't expect the market to go through there. So if I'm going to take a trade, you have to look at the chart and make a judgment call based on what the chart is telling you as to how far you think that trade is likely to take you before you hit some problem on the chart. Is it volume based problem? Is it price based problem? And what are the slower time frames telling you as well? Then you're down onto the chart looking at the, the volume perspective. What is the trend monitor telling you? What are the other indicators telling you? And you put it all together. But in terms of the opportunity of a trade, you are looking at the chart from the, the price, the technical point of view to make a judgment call on whether you think there is enough in there for you to take the position. If you Are you prepared to put 10 points at risk in order to make 15 or 20 or 30? And does the chart give you that uh, room for manoeuvre? Do you think that is likely to happen? We've now got this nice reversal going on. We had a brief congestion phase at the volume point of control. It's fine. We're now moving up nicely, moving through these regions. Should go through here pretty quick. Volume's nice on that. We've got rising volume here. So we've got two nice candles here. No particular wicks to either side. I'm just watching what's going on. Let's just pull the VIX over for you. That's going up uh, really nicely now. Super dupes. And we've got a volatility candle. So let's just stick with the chart for a moment. Okay, what do we expect to see now? Well, we've got a ton of volume. We've got a volatility trigger. Let's see if the, if the candle actually reversed inside. If it doesn't, it's fine. We can carry on. If I get those, I normally get out or I leave some of the position on. Uh, generally not uh, all of it off the table, but probably most of it uh, would come off the table. I can always jump back in again. In this case, we've cleared, we've gone through. And what's happening in terms of the VIX, the reason we're seeing this, let me just pull this over. This is on TradingView. It's a fantastic platform. Most of the indicators we have there, we are developing others as well. You can see here the VIX, this is on one minute, this is on three minute, this is on five minute, and this is on 10 minutes. So what's happening to the VIX? The VIX is dropping, it's been in congestion a little bit. Now we're starting to see a move lower, seeing that move on three, seeing that move on five. So we've got the VIX alongside, that's giving us confidence uh, that uh, you know this move is developing nicely because if the VIX is falling, we expect to see these markets rallying accordingly. Okay, let's go over onto slightly slower timeframes. Let's see what we've got up onto five, very strong platform. We've got a really nice platform of support in place now here. This is very strong, providing a springboard. What's also interesting about this little rally lower, you see this price action falling, 
What was the volume doing? It was falling. It's anomalous. Why is it anomalous? Because if the market's going to fall out of bed, you want to see rising volume and not falling volume. So now we're starting to see the, mar the market rally stronger. Really nice move. Drop down on to two. There we go. Good volume on there. I'll just put the volume on here as well in real time. Let's change it over. I have it switched off because I have so much data coming in. I have to be careful what I've got. Here we go. I've got so many charts running. There we go. Um, so now you see it building in real time. Okay, so that's the last candle. Nice widespread candle. We're now moving up into this low volume region I mentioned. So it's not going to take a lot of effort to get through there because there's no volume there. There's nothing to hinder progress. And that's what it's about in trading. It's it's looking at the chart and saying to yourself, hmm, what's ahead of me? If I get in here, how much how much clear water have I got? You know, what is like to cause a problem to my trade? And am I looking at 20 pips, 30 pips, 50 points, whatever it is? And how much have I got a risk on the table? And also importantly, where am I going to place my stop loss? You know, what protection can I gain from the chart to place my stop loss? This is really going up nicely now. Uh, the VIX is falling nicely. Just looking over in the other screen. All, all tickety boo. Not terribly difficult. Nice money here. Uh, you know, we're talking maybe 50, 60, 70 points now, three, four hundred dollars on a that's on a single contract. The YM is the smallest, five dollars a point. It's uh, it's very right. Okay, now we've got some weakness coming in. Uh, this is on the 15 second, so it's pretty quick. We've got a ton of volume come in. We've got a nice can, a nice wick to the upper body. What do we expect? We expect the market to sell off a bit. Why? Because there's a lot of traders selling out here because we've had the rally, the profit taking. They've all made money up here, getting out, selling ton of volume there so don't be surprised if the market congests doesn't mean it's going to roll over and fall flat on its face because the VIX is still falling all it means is that we've got selling going on so expect some congestion but the market's going to carry on higher because the VIX is still falling up onto two minute very nice all good stuff Nice and relaxed, nice and calm. Nothing to frighten the horses at the moment. And this is where we are on the daily. Now what you need to be aware of is that on the daily chart, we are coming up to the volume point of control. So from an intraday perspective, I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen now, but expect to see congestion building over the next few days for this market. So maybe over the next two, three, four, five days, you know, we're gonna see some congestion around here. It doesn't mean there won't be intraday trading opportunities, but we've got a very strong ceiling of resistance in place here. We've got the volume point of control here, ton of volume. This is the highest, uh, the highest level of volume. And therefore we're gonna to expect to see some congestion building over the next few days. So it's unlikely we're gonna see uh, dramatic moves on a daily basis. It's more likely that we'll see some, some consolidation going on doesn't mean there won't be any trading opportunities, certainly from a scalping perspective at any rate. So that's all jolly super and dandy. Let's just go and have a look at, um, let's have a look at all three. Here we are. Okay. No, no. So, this is where we are. We've got the YM here on the left, which is the one we had. So we've got the five minute equivalent up here. We've got the daily, that's the Dow 30. In the middle, we've got the NQ. This is the NASDAQ 100. We've got the five minute up here. And over here on the right hand side, we've got the ES, which is the S&P 500 and the five minute equivalent up the top. So they're all doing pretty much the same thing. They've all had reversals. Nice wick to the lower body. Nice wick to the lower body. Nice wick to the lower body. All decent volume. The difference is that the ES and the YM are both coming up to their uh, equivalent volume point of control here, whereas the NQ, which is this one in the middle, has already surpassed that. It's also more significantly got a very strong level of support, price-based support in below here. So in terms of the, the daily chart, which we've written about extensively over the last uh, period, is that it's broken through this level, through the volume point of control and this level, it's now got a very decent platform in place. And really the level that's causing it some grief is here at 9,200 and just above. 
But if it can clear that region with some decent volume, then it is likely to lead the others higher because the volume here is falling away on the daily and therefore the progress through here will require less effort to gain the same result. It all comes back to Wyckoff the whole time, effort and result, cause and effect and supply and demand. Those three laws govern what we do. They are the foundation of volume price analysis and we then bolt everything else on top in terms of supply and demand, in terms of support and resistance and everything else. And the other reason for having the, the all three charts up together when you're trading them is that from time to time you do get anomalies, not always, but you do get anomalies. But in addition to that, you also get confirmation of the price action. So what you're seeing on one can be confirmed on another. And it just gives that extra element of um, confidence, if you like, in terms of trading these charts. Let's just head back onto those. Now I'm just going to break for a moment. So let's just go back to where we were. Indices, and there we are. There we are. <clears throat> That's all looking fine. The VIX is still ticking down, not with quite the same momentum that it was. Let's just pull that over again so you can have a look at that. There we are. So it's not moving at quite the same speed, but nevertheless, you know, we want to see it dropping a little bit more. If we're going to hold a position long, then we want to see this falling away as well. And again, if you're trading any futures market, this gives you a heads up on sentiment. As Anna said, one of the key um, drivers for reversal trading is sentiment. And the VIX will reveal that for you in a very simple way on a chart. It's based on the options market, on the balance of puts and calls. And it just gives you an instant heads up intraday on the sentiment. There are many other places to look at sentiment, the Forex market. Uh, there's bonds, bond yields, bond prices, all sorts of places you will get a view on sentiment. You'll get it in terms of commodities as well. Risk, Anything that's a risk asset will give you a view on what the market is feeling in terms of its risk on or risk off appetite because that's all trading comes down to at the end of the day it really is a very simple uh, seesaw of constant flows from risk on to risk off and back again there's nothing else to it it's as simple as that and if you understand the relational aspects of the markets and can apply it and you have a methodology like volume price analysis which reveals what is actually going on behind those numbers then really that's all you need that's your crystal ball on the market you don't need anything else you support it with the indicators they help to get you in they help to give you all that information quickly and they help to get you out at the right time as well can i pass back to you for a moment darling okay let me just break there because i'm going to move on to commodities for a moment 